Okay, so this is uh, Unit 8 um, for the uh, of the material for language learning and technology and focuses on games. It's the last bit of uh, regular input material and I'm simply going to talk you through this set of material to show you um, how it's supposed to work um, and then you can uh, work through it independently um, yourselves um, to, to, to get an idea of, of some of the issues that are there. I'm going to uh, suggest you pause the video and, and do activities but of course you can just simply work through the materials yourselves. Uh, you can navigate easily enough through the material. There are links within the material uh, to, to the next section or you can use the menu that's at the top to go back uh, and of course forward as well so you can use you can do it in, in whichever way you want um, but I imagine you'll basically be going going through it so the first task is to get a sense of um, how you use games in the language classroom I'm obviously particularly interested in digital games but I don't want to exclude uh, other kinds of games so this is a padlet um, and it's a, a kind of interactive whiteboard um, and of course this links back to uh, our discussions about computer mediated communication um, so you click on the uh, the board and you can uh, you can post ideas about about your use of games uh, this tool used to be called Woolwisher in the past um, but it's now changed its name and you know it's it's interesting uh, you know when you start thinking about this that although you know, we separate ideas out into different blocks different units for the course unit actually uh, there's a, a lot of linkage between uh, what we're going to say in in digital games to what we would say in computer mediated communication um, and of course you know the the whole point of, of playing a game is to encourage uh, communication of, of various types uh, of course there, there might be other reasons why you would do it as well including motivation and and those kinds of uh, issues but you know fundamentally it's about getting people to to use language so um, uh, you can stop the the video now and and go and and make a posting or else as I said you can just quickly get a sense of how it's supposed to work and then go back and do it so I'm now going to move on to part three part three is a, a more general video about uh, using uh, digital games in education but I think there are uh, ideas in that video uh, that we can translate uh, and get us thinking about uh, the way that uh, we might use such games in TESOL so again stop this video have a look at that have a think about it um, and uh, we'll get you to put some ideas up into Blackboard um, uh, when you've worked through the material this uh, part four um, is um, uh, basically focuses on a slide share produced by Graham Stanley. There's there's a recording of him talking uh, through the slides, um, so I'll let you listen to that. Uh, but both Graham and Kyle uh, do a lot of uh, work uh, around using uh, games in in um, in the language classroom. Uh, Kyle has a wiki. Um, and between them they also uh, produce a blog as well um, so you can have a look at that blog um, and it's got lots of nice ideas and you can find them on Facebook um, some of you may already know um, um, both of them um, as they've been uh, they work for the council the British Council and, and some of you uh, also work for the British Council as well um, at the bottom of the page there's a little a little a little kind of uh, multiple choice test uh, which I use in class to get people thinking about um, you know or, or get some idea of how people are kind of working through the course unit but I'll skip that uh, for the purposes of this bit of the course unit here we have some examples of particular games I mean if you've looked through uh, uh, or listened to Graham's um, talk uh, about digital games in language education he talks about the different types of, of, uh, of, of games that you find a lot of the games that people use are not language specific at all um, uh, although the top two here um, language garden and trace effects are um, trace effects is is uh, an American uh, production um, uh, featuring uh, people from the field of TESOL uh, and technology uh, people like Deborah Healy for example uh, was a major player in in the construction of trace effects so you might want to look at that um, 
and and then some of the others are you know more you know more general um, games uh, that that you can use in various ways for, for language learning. You might also like to try you know what is called a serious game, um, uh, Windfall, uh, which is uh, you know interesting um, uh, to explore and and a good place to start if you've never played a digital game. It, you know it gives you a sense of the kinds of things that you can potentially do. And uh, of course, increasingly we find um, various kinds of games, language games of various types on our mobile devices. Uh, one specifically uh, designed that I'm aware of for, for um, language teaching is Word Carrot, um, but there's also um, the the reading book that I mentioned, Arthur's Teacher Trouble, which I includes uh, game elements. And and another one again by the British Council called Taxi Driver it has another uh, types another uh, you know some games built into it as well. Although in some ways you could see you know those those games being more like a, a test. And you'll also find some references within the the, the book, my edited book, um, on the use of uh, games, uh, particularly in in the primary primary area. Um, and you'll find mention of an area called fan fiction, um, which are quite traditional games in the sense that they're very text-based. Um, but uh, Joe Pereira, uh, you know, along with Graham Graham Stanley, in fact, um, both graduates from the, the MA, uh, runs his own blog where he he talks about aspects of games, particularly including fan fiction. So again, somewhere you might like to explore. Um, Stephen Thorne is is very well known um, for his interests in using games uh, for language teaching, um, and there's uh, a link here to a video of a talk he did uh, at a recent ITEFL conference, um, and also a link to a special issue of Recall, uh, which is particularly focused on on uh, language uh, teaching using sort of uh, language teaching and and digital games. Um, and uh, you know it's a good place to start if if you have um, you know, uh, areas uh, ideas you know uh, you're interested in this particular area and, and want to to get sort of an overview. So the introductory chapter there in that recall I would say is is a good place to start reading um, if you want to get something you know more academic. Um, then um, a, a final bit of games which goes away from um, you know the specifics uh, the sort of types of you know computer bound games are a, a, an interesting idea um, that, that's been worked on in the ELT field by Paul Driver um, he um, uses he takes students uh, out into uh, you know the real world and plays games in the real world rather than uh, playing games on a computer. He he takes his students and and produces um, games and activities in the real world, and then he uses digital technology. He gets the students to use te technology to record the practice, the the engagement um, uh, that uh, that that you know that they they do with uh, you know in. Um, uh, you know, that they actually kind of engage with on when when they're out in 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 the you know in in his case originally he was working in Porto in Portugal and he was uh, you know using various types of games um, for uh, this uh, you know to to uh, to get his students to, to use language in an EFL context and it's very interesting um, and uh, you'll see that uh, you know other people have also become interested um, in that. Um, uh, area as well. Now the final um, uh, bit of this this is uh, actually a, a, an online book on digital games uh, which you might like to to have a look at um, and if you've uh, you know particularly interested in this area this is a, a good place to start. You can see it's a fairly hefty book um, and it is only online uh, but it, it's something that you might consider. So there's an introduction to uh, a set of materials that are available there for you to explore um, and I'll set up some forums um, in Blackboard uh, for you to put up your ideas and reactions to it.